Hi there, everybody, and welcome to your latest Newcastle United news right here on the Toon Review YouTube channel. My name is Paul. Thank you so much for joining us. Quite a bit to get through in today's show. Uh, the prospect of a very, very exciting uh, signing in the summer. Uh, we've got other transfer news. We've got what might happen with uh, Minte next season. And, of course, our previous owner has been a complete monumental bell end yet again. Uh, but we'll start off with the real exciting news that is broken by several media outlets this morning involving Michael Elise, who, of course, is at the moment at Crystal Palace and absolutely destroyed Manchester United last night. Now, he has been linked with Manchester United in the past. Uh, he did have, a year ago, a release clause of £35 million in his contract. He has since penned a new deal with Crystal Palace. That now is standing at £60 million. Quid. Now, that is a lot of money. But listen, we've been talking about marquee signings, you know, getting a few transfers in, maybe on the free and things like that to save a bit of money and go for a real marquee signing. Michael Elise, for me, is that marquee signing. 100%. If we can get that guy in, he's 22-year-old, he's a fabulous footballer. The future is what he wants, basically. It's it's a huge ocean of uh, possibilities for Elise. Um, and Newcastle United have suddenly uh, been linked with him this morning from several media outlets. And I always say when I do these news shows that, you know, if it's just one or, or two media outlets reporting this, then maybe it's just a little bit of a clickbait link or something like that. But there is genuine interest from Newcastle United out there for release here. And everyone is going to look at the £60 million release clause, but there's ways of Newcastle United raising the funds for that. If we get players in, such as Kelly, etc., on free transfers to avoid having to pay massive transfer fees for these kind of players and build a squad that is capable of challenging for a lot more next season, then let's do it, guys. You know, wh why not? Why should Newcastle United not be in this bracket now to sign these quality players and I know everyone's going to say FFP PSR right but we don't know what the situation is behind the scenes we don't know how much money Newcastle United do actually have to spend in the summer Eddie Howe can come out all he wants and say well you know we're, we're not we haven't got a lot but obviously he's not going to say oh yeah we've got we've got a treasure chest because if he goes for players and he's come out with saying, oh, we've got a treasure chest next year because we've saved our money. We're well within FFP. Other teams are just going to ramp the prices up, aren't they? As soon as they see Newcastle coming and the manager's already said that, it's going to look ridiculous on us. So you can understand why Eddie Howe is playing the uh, a little bit coy on the transfer budget for next season. Who is to say that we can't get Elise? Newcastle United now are on the rise. We can pay really good wages and we can... Bring these players in. These players, like Bruno, Isak, etc., Botman, they were sold to this process, so why not Elise? And if Elise came in, the right-hand side of Newcastle United is sorted. You know, that is one of the positions that we as fans have said many, many times that that is a position that we really need to sort out. Um, Jacob Murphy's doing his very best there at the moment. We know that Miggy's not the future there. He's had his time um, and possibly might be moved on uh, in the summer. But, you know, this kind of player is a real on-the-edge-of-your-seat player. You know, can you imagine Elise on the right and Gordon on the left for next season? And then we've got still Harvey Barnes and Jacob Murphy as squad members. It's a fantastic thought, that. And, you know, I, I kind of looked at the reports this morning thinking, yeah, yeah, obviously, you know, it's it's just it's just come to light uh, that, that after the Manchester United game that this release clause is there. Not many people actually knew about this release clause, but it's there and we have an opportunity now to maybe go and look at it. And Sesco is another one who obviously has, a, I think it's a £45 million release clause. So you're talking, who do they want? You know, who would you go for if you had a chance of signing Sesco or... Elise, who would it be? Let me know in the comments, because for me, Elise is one of the most exciting prospects in European football, if not the world football right now. We've seen what he can do, and he can get even better. And we know what Eddie Howe can do working with these players as well. And I just think that it's a fantastic... It's just nice to be linked with these players, isn't it? You know, before the takeover, we were linked with bargain basement players. But even if we don't go for Elise, the fact that we're linked with him now, the fact that people are saying we're interested in him, that's massive for us given where we've come from. And I'm not go I'm not one of these that goes back and thinking, oh, you know, look where we were two years ago or anything like that, you know, for, for where we are in the league and that. But when you look at 
players that are linked with our club now to where to the other players that were linked a couple of years ago. It is night and day. And the fact that we have a possibility or linked with a player of Michael Elise's quality, that says a lot for me as to where the club is now and what the aims of the club are. Because going for these kind of players means we really do mean business going into next season. But we'll see what happens with that. Now, Mike Ashley, um, I have to bring this guy up, unfortunately, because uh, he is now once again taking Newcastle United to the Court of Appeal regarding the situation with uh, Newcastle and Adidas not selling in Sports Direct shops. Now, obviously, Mike Ashley has took a big huff over this, and I think it's because he knows that Newcastle United uh, are going to grow massively in popularity as the seasons go on, and obviously there's going to be more and more demand for replica shirts for Newcastle United. That is fine. You know, that we know that's going to happen. So Mike Ashley is, is really now pushing. He's going to take it all the way to the Court of Appeal because he believes that his... Uh, shops should be able to sell the replica shirts from Adidas. Now, at the previous hearing, um, it was found that um, Sports Direct had uh, no reasonable or legitimate reasons uh, for the court case. It was uh, They looked at it and said, no, you, you don't have any reasons at all, uh, and there's no obligation from Newcastle United or Adidas side to sell these shirts in Sports Direct. So, you know, Mike Ashley, uh, they, they also said that obviously if he, if he takes it to appeal, um, the prospect of success is very little. But he's still going for it. And he's still spending an absolute fortune taking us to court. This cancer that used to be in our football club still won't go away. And every now and again, he pops up with a reason to try and have a little pop at Newcastle and a little pop at the owners. And he's very, very good at it. He's a, you know, there's no doubt Mike Ashley is a ruthless businessman. We've seen that. Um, but he was a stain on our football club for 15 years. An absolute stain and a disgrace. And the fact that this guy still gets mentioned in the media trying to upset the apple cart at Newcastle United, I just wish he'd sod off. You know, go and buy Sunderland. Go and buy the Mackhams and, and do something with them. You know, change the stadium of light into the stadium of sports direct or whatever you want to call it. But just... Just go away. Just leave us alone. You know, we don't want to sell... Adidas and Newcastle don't want to sell their replica shirts in your poxy Lonsdale stores. All right? Just disappear. Please. What a bellend that man is. I hope, I hope you do spend an absolute fortune on that appeal and fail. Because I'll laugh my Johnson off. I really will. Just go and spend an absolute fortune on solicitors and all of that kind of stuff for the Court of Appeal, which is one of the highest courts in the land, to say, Mike Ashley, bugger off. Go and buy the Mackhams. That's it. That, that, that's, it would be really funny if a judge turned around and went, Mike, you've, you, you failed in this appeal, but here's some advice. Go and buy Sunderland. Just disappear out of Newcastle United's radar, man, for God's sake. Um, now... Many, many times I have mentioned a certain goalkeeper called Aaron Ramsdale, uh, but he's still getting linked with Newcastle United left, right and centre. Now, this morning I've looked at some of the reports linking him with the club and said that the wages that Aaron Ramsdale would expect far outweigh what Newcastle United would want to spend. Uh, let's not forget the ridiculous uh, transfer fee that Arsenal would want that I mentioned in a previous show. That hasn't changed, but... It's also now the wages that may become a huge issue with signing Ramsdale. Um, it does say that Newcastle United have a very um, stern and strict wage structure still in place at Newcastle. Uh, but Ramsdale coming in would probably break the walls a little bit on that structure. So I don't think they're particularly interested in doing it. Eddie Howe is said to be a massive fan of Ramsdale. Um, it's understandable. He's an English goalkeeper. You know, we, we tend to look at them, Nick Pope, etc. Um, but Ramsdale coming in against Nick Pope, is Ramsdale, Ramsdale, for me, the way the situation has gone for him, is going to want to play first-team football after he lost his place at Arsenal. Now, Ramsdale is a decent keeper. I wouldn't say he's world-class or, or anything like that. He is a decent goalkeeper, but he is prone to mistakes, as a lot of keepers are, I suppose. But £40 million transfer fee, or was it 60 I can't remember now. Uh, and then the wages on top of that. Um, I think we'd, you know, if we're going to go for players like uh, uh, Michael Elise, we're not going to go for players like Aaron Ramsdale. Uh, Nick Pope would be number one. And I just think we should maybe look 
uh, at the championship and some of the goalkeepers there. There's some very, very good goalkeepers there. And, of course, Dougie Friedman is getting linked very heavily now with the director of football job. And he is a very talented man at looking down the EFL and bringing in absolute quality. Elise being one of them, as a you know, at Crystal Palace, there's some, he's done a great job and knows how to find a player. So all these Newcastle fans having to dig at that possibility, open your eyes a little bit to the expectations and what this guy can do, bringing players from the unknown. It can work. It can work. Uh, and finally, uh, Yakubo Minte, uh, of course, on loan at Feyenoord at the moment. He's had a real breakout season. Uh, it is... Very well known that Feyenoord want him back. Now, the problem that they have is Arne Slot could be heading to Liverpool, of course, uh, as manager next season to replace Jurgen Klopp. That is, well, according to the media, it's pretty much done. Uh, he's heavily, heavily linked with the Liverpool job. However, the hierarchy at Feyenoord still want him. Now, this is before they know who the new manager is going to be. So I'm not sure whether Feyenoord will promote from within. And they've already spoke about uh, whoever's going to take over. They've spoke about Minte. Of course, Eddie Howe has said he will take a look at him in pre-season. Um, but the likelihood is that he will go back out on loan. And if he does go back out on loan, it has to be to the right club. It has to be where he can develop even further. Now, a lot of people have said, you know, send him into the championship, uh, give him a run in the championship, give him first-team football there and see what he can do in the championship. We know how rough and tumble that league is. It can be very, very difficult, and it would really test him. Um, but I, I wouldn't be opposed to him going back to the Eredivisie Divisie and playing for Feyenoord for another season. Uh, this kid looks like an absolute star, um, and we have to be careful with him, obviously. We have to look after him, and that's what the club will do. Um, it hasn't gone the same for Garan Kowal. You know, he was he came with a big uh, name, I suppose, from, from Australia, uh, a wonder kid, if you like. It hasn't worked out for him, but it's certainly worked out for Minte. I don't know whether Kual has just not found the right club yet to go on loan to, but it's it's two or three now he's been to and it hasn't really worked out. So we'll see what happens there. But uh, Minte, I mean, look, a lot of Newcastle fans have said they want him in the squad next season, but let's see what happens in the summer and preseason and what Eddie Howe makes of him, because at the end of the day, he will make the decision uh, on where Minte plays next season. Uh, but that is it for the news. As usual, guys, please let me know in the comments uh, what you think of all the stories today. What are your thoughts? And of course, if you do enjoy the video, please hit the thumbs up. Very important to the channel that we keep them coming in so we appear in the search results on YouTube. And of course, if you're new and you like what you see, uh, why not hit that subscribe button? It is free to do so. We are on the way to 30,000 subscribers. Never thought I'd ever say that. Uh, but with your help, we can get there. Uh, don't forget to hit the notification bell as well, which will let you know when we schedule our live shows or we upload any more videos such as these ones. Uh, but thank you very, very much for watching, guys. Have a great Tuesday. See you soon.